Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Come to the Table podcast. This is the Come to the Table podcast with Adam, and I am your host, Adam Franzen. Today, I am once again excited to bring on another guest to the show. Last week, we had Joey Calopy. This week, I invited Brett Rushman to the show. Brett, how are you doing? I'm terrific, Adam. Thanks for having me. So uh, before we get started, Brett, just so people out there who maybe don't know you um, can get to know you a little bit, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm Brett Rushman, born and raised in Campbell County, Kentucky, lived uh, here my entire life. I am 40 years old. I am married to a lovely woman named Cheddar um, for the past 16 years, and I have three children. They are 15, 13, and 12, sophomore, eighth grader, and sixth grader. Wow. That's pretty well spaced out. Yeah. You guys did well there. We'll talk a little bit more about your kids growing up. First, I want to talk about how we met. So uh, we, we were just talking about this before the show. We met back in 04, we believe, when you bought your house. Yep, bought and my first house in June 2004, and Adam's good friend. Yeah, my good friend Evan Sears lived across the street. Yeah. And uh, we used to damage people's cars in the neighborhood, tossing <laughs> footballs back and forth in our yard. So we appreciate you letting us have a little fun out there, unlike some of the neighbors maybe who didn't <laughs> like us throwing football in the street. Not a problem. <laughs> Um, so let's get into what what this podcast is about, really, which is talking about our faith, talking about what it means to us, and hopefully enlightening some people out there to maybe challenge themselves to look at their faith as well. And both Brett and I were raised as what we call cradle Catholics. And uh, Brett, why don't you tell me a little bit about your Catholic upbringing? Yeah. So uh, my grandma, very religious person, my dad's parents and my mom's parents, both Catholic, and my dad and mom were both raised Catholic. And they did the same for us. So we were raised Catholic my entire life. Um, like you said, a cradle Catholic. So it's all I've known from a religion standpoint. From a spirituality standpoint, um, gotten a lot of different experiences throughout my life that have broadened my horizons, if you will. But I keep coming back to that Catholic faith and that upbringing and just how solid it is and how universal it is. Absolutely. Uh, universal, you know, ironic you use that word, right? Because that's what Catholic that's what means. means. I know you were just spitballing some uh, <laughs> good, <laughs> some good knowledge there. <laughs> but but I agree with you. Uh, and I and I said this last week that my parents helped model the faith for me growing up. They showed me what it meant to be a good family. They showed me what it meant to that it was important to go to church on Sundays, that it was important to pray before meals and pray at nighttime. Um, but it was later that I sort of met God on a more personal level, and I think everybody has that. It's hard to meet God when you're growing up and you, you just don't understand. Well, heck, even as adults sometimes we don't understand the greater concepts of life. But but I think and I cherish the fact that I was cradle Catholic because yeah. it kept me grounded throughout my whole childhood and it kept me in great schools and it and it really helped instill in me the confidence that I have today in my faith. Right, I agree. I, I learned what it meant to be Catholic through school and through my family, but truly knowing God was through experiences. You can't learn that. You have to experience it. So. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. Um, another thing I think that that is a reason that I've stayed Catholic through all this time is I've been challenged at various times in my life to to figure out, well, why am I going to stay Catholic? Because I said this on a previous episode of my podcast. This is probably months ago if anybody listened to it. If not, you can go back. I believe it's titled something along the lines of, of a reversion or conversion to Christ. Everybody's got to have one. And what I meant by that was if you're not a Catholic, you might convert to Christ and convert to the Catholic faith as an outsider, and I don't like using that term because we're all a part of this body right, <laughs> of absolutely. the world. But but if you are Catholic, at some point you make that conscious choice to stay or to come back, right? Uh, so you might have a reversion of sorts, an, a faith that was instilled in you as a kid. Maybe you wandered like the prodigal son, but ultimately brought your way back. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that happens with a lot of people. Absolutely. Um, so both of us are Bishop Brosser graduates, uh, Bishop Brosser here in Alexandria. I graduated in 2006. Brett's not too much older than me, right? 1998. 1998. Yeah. So tell me about your time at Brosser. Was it, I mean, we learned a little bit about your time uh, from your family growing up, but what about your time at Brosser? Do you remember that being a part of your faith journey at all? And if so, how? 
Absolutely. Well, we, we would go to mass at school, so there's part of that, just having it at school and not only having it at your house. So that's part of it. But really it was the experiences, like I mentioned before. Um, you know, we I was a part of student council. I'm not if you if you see me out, you know I'm not a sports guy. I'm a I'm a more of a student council guy, whatever that means. So um but yeah. I did that, and through that, I had a lot of uh, more religious experiences. So it really, um, I don't know, I, Donna Heim was the uh, moderator of student council, and she's a religious person, and she uh, is a spiritual person, and she um, instills that, you know, just by living her life. She never told me, Brett, go experience Jesus this way. I She allowed us to experience it in that group setting. Yeah, I think uh, Donna Heim's probably, Donna Heim's, s- She's such a neat person, first of all. If you don't know her, you might think that she's a little over the top on things, but she might be the first one to tell you, heck yeah, I'm over the top. I'm <laughs> over the top for Jesus. How else can you be? <laughs> but but she helped me as well. It's because of her that I challenged myself to learn more about the faith. Um, when I started teaching at Brossard, I was teaching social studies. So I had all social studies classes, history, psychology, global issues, things like that. Well, an opportunity came up where they needed somebody to teach a couple of religion classes, and she knocked on my door and said, I need you to teach religion. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? She said, yes, absolutely. I said, well, you know, I have faith, but I don't really know the faith. She said, if you have faith, you'll get to know the faith. So, And she was absolutely right. And that first year, I remember reading the textbook that we had, and I remember reading more scripture than I had in a long time, and and really my passion for catechesis. Joey Colopy and I talked about catechesis a little bit last week, but but just to know what the ter- church teaches and why they teach it, because these kids were going to come ask me questions <laughs> that I needed to know how to answer. I couldn't just be like, "Well, just be a good person; and it'll all work out." Like <laughs> maybe, but <laughs> I need to be able to answer on a more deeper spiritual level so that they understand why. Absolutely. There's a little more to it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the thing uh, that that Brosser taught me the most probably was, well, I don't know if they taught me this, but it's where I really met God in a more spiritual level. I always knew about God, and I sort of just had my own little, I don't know if childish faith is the right thing, where I believed, but I didn't understand it. But our senior year at Bishop Brosser, we go on what's called a Christian Awakening Retreat. And I've mentioned this several times on my podcast, and I never really have explained to those who maybe don't know what it is, what it actually is. And so the Christian Awakening retreats were senior retreats given to seniors in the Diocese of Covington, um, which is where Bishop Brossard is. And it was required for you to go through this one weekend retreat down at St. Anne's Convent with some of your classmates. And you would essentially listen to older adults and younger adults giving witness talks and and they're called witness talks because they're telling you of a a time in their life or a journey in their life where they witnessed God's work in their life and i remember listening to and and you know i'm not going to mention their names either but wh- when i listened to these talks i just remember thinking to myself okay i knew this person outside of church or outside of school and I just thought they were kind of normal, just kind of carrying through the ways of life, going to work, making money, taking care of their family like most people do. But I didn't realize just how important God plays a role in people's life, especially not just in in the highs, but in the lows of life. It helps bring you out right. of just bad moments in your life or whatever you might be experiencing. Right. Most people won't get into that in a conversation about how's the weather and what's your day look like. But when you go on a retreat like that, you take time away on purpose and they took time away on purpose to share it. Um, It really can help you experience what they've uh, gone through. Absolutely. And, and it challenged me to look at my friendships a little differently too. I think the ones that I had, it just, it made me value the people in my life so much more. And I just remember with my friends being able to talk about some things after that weekend that maybe we wouldn't have opened up around. Right. You know, sitting around a campfire with your buddies, you might be willing to let your guard down a little bit and talk about your faith a little bit more than you would have before experiencing that weekend. Agreed. You know, I've we mentioned this. So I, I've met some lifelong friends through that program, being on the teams after receiving it back in uh, 1997. But, you know, 
I think that you and your sister are two of them. I mean, you were on a lot of teams with me, and I were on, I was on a lot of teams with you, I should say, and <laughs> uh, got to know both of you. And you know, it's uh, it's just a neat experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and you bring up a great point. I think because we both had such good experiences as seniors, we were invited back or we volunteered ourselves to come back and try to share those same experiences as team leaders. And I value every one of those I was able to do. And um, I mentioned it last week, I think, with Joey, um, that that's actually where I met my wife. <laughs> yeah, She was asked to volunteer at a Brossert retreat because her cousin was working it. And that's that's how we met. And the rest is history. It was part of God's plan. So um, hopefully one day uh, we can get back to having those kind of like how they were. So they they changed the format about three years ago. And I don't really know how they're going. I haven't really asked around too much, but I, I hope one day that we get to be involved in those kind of treats, retreats with high school kids again, because yeah. it was really, it really brought about the best in people, I think. Yeah, I agree. And <laughs> shout out to Sister Therese for running that for 30 years. Absolutely. I told Sister the other day I was going to try to get her on here, and she started asking me a thousand questions about what podcasts were. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, so I might have to share her this link and see if uh, she'll listen to this, and maybe that'll convince her to get on here with me. <laughs> Come on, Sister T, do it. <laughs> um, so we talked about volunteering for Christian Awakening Retreats. Well, let's talk about some other volunteer work. Uh, Brett and I both belong to St. Mary's Parish here in Alexandria, and I can tell you that him and his wife are heavily involved in so much that happens at St. Mary's, and I often look at myself and wonder, why am I not doing even half or even a quarter of what Brett and his wife are doing? You guys are involved in so much and I almost feel like I'm coming up short on my volunteer work <laughs> because of all the work that you do. I know that's not your goal is to try to make everybody feel no, guilty. No, 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 <laughs> no. First of all, there's not a comparison, right? Everybody's given different gifts. So do what do what God calls you to do. But in my case, I'm not a big fan of sitting down. I just don't like it. I don't enjoy it. So if I'm sitting down, I'm typically thinking about what I could be doing other than sitting down. And so I get up and do something. And a lot of times that does end up being volunteer work at St. Mary's or other places. And I think that um, I don't mind getting in the weeds and doing detail work, and I don't mind getting in front of people and talking. And so I, I quite honestly get, I'll call it voluntold, to uh, to do different things. And I've been lecturing for a while, and so I get used to talking in front of people. Lecturing is reading the reading from the Bible at church. And so I do that, and uh, you know, a lot of has come from that. And I started that when I was probably 20 years old or something. So... Um, but just really enjoy it. Enjoy. I've lived in Alexandria since I was two years old and just, I enjoy seeing Alexandria grow and be better. And part of that is through volunteerism and making it better. Cause who's el who else is going to do it if I don't do it. Right. And there's plenty of other people that will, right. I just mean it takes a village. And so I want to be part of that. Absolutely. Well, I know at St. Mary's, we all appreciate all that you've been involved with. And I know one of the big things you've been involved with lately is the capital campaign at St. Mary's. Can you tell me kind of where that is and, and yeah. where we're hoping to go for those of us who are listening from St. Mary's? Absolutely. Cultivating Legacy campaign is uh, in the throes. We have Project One nearly complete. That is the elevator in the church, which um, we desperately needed for ease of access to the undercroft, which is the basement. And then we added to the parking lot um, in, in order so that we can do Project Two, which is add some classrooms, four classrooms and a gymnasium to the school. And then uh, project three after that will be to renovate the existing gym to be additional classrooms as well. Because Alexandria is growing like crazy, and as part of that, St. Mary's is growing. So, you know, we've almost doubled in size in the past 10 years, um, which is crazy to think. And uh, it's not going to stop anytime soon with, um, you know, subdivisions like Arcadia putting a 1,000 units in. You got to – they're going somewhere. So – Absolutely. It's something that we've seen at Bishop Brossard already. You know, a few years back, we were going through a little bit of an enrollment issue, a, a big enrollment issue where we were having some concerns and, and some people were being laid off. But we've rebounded tremendously thanks to a lot of the development that's been going on, thanks to how great St. Mary's has been, which is bringing us so many kids. And so um, it's really cool to see St. Mary's thriving, and, and for those out there who don't know, that's where my wife works as well. She teaches preschool there, and she loves it there, and I know the kids that, that go through there really are learning from the best 
uh, teachers that they can learn from at that age. So we're thankful for you and for your wife and all that you've done for that. And absolutely. And we'll keep you guys in our prayers as we continue to cultivate that legacy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, so let's let's think about your family a little bit more. I mentioned your wife, but uh, you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast your three kids. How does faith play a role in your family life now as a husband, as a father? And is it the same or is it different from when you were a kid? It's it's very similar, and I would say that I because I learned it from my parents, and my wife's parents were both Catholic as well, and she learned it when she was a kid, and so we have a lot of the same things. We try and interweave it into everything we do, so prayers before bread, prayers before meals, um, just talking about God. We have crucifixes in our in the different rooms. We bring it up that he's one of our friends and needs to be one of our friends. He's a family member. He's not just somebody we pray to. So we try to personalize it, and I think that the reason for that is I mentioned it before, you have to experience God to have that conversion, if you will, or to have a personal relationship. It can't just be taught to you. So we try and let them experience it through what we're doing and hope that they get it from the community that is also around them through Brossard, St. Mary's, and Alexandria, Campbell County in general. That's awesome. Uh, I, I feel the same way. You know, the things that I remember growing up that I remember about my faith, I try to do those same things with my kids, praying before meals, praying at nighttime, um, just asking them, you know, if they're at church with us, you know, what are they learning? (laughs) Are you paying attention? Uh, Just getting them to do the actions and model the faith. And my kids are younger than yours. Mine are only seven, six, and three. Um, The three-year-old just wants to climb underneath pews and (laughs) and lay down on the kneelers and things like that right now. But the older two are old enough where they can start to to model it a little bit easier. And I look forward to hopefully having conversations with them as they get older. And you know how it is as a father. At some point, you know that they're going to be leaving the nest. So you just pray and hope that that they're grounded in their faith because— because you and I both know you need that when Absolutely. you when you leave the nest. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, so, so I want to talk a little bit about one more thing here, and I'm going to surprise you a little bit with this, okay. and that is, do you have any goals for the future as far as your faith? I know you're involved in so much right now, but is there anything in the future that you could see yourself doing as far as spreading the faiths, uh, sharing the gospel with others? Do you have anything in mind? Wow, man. Oh, well, didn't expect that one, but thank you for asking it. Um, well, people, wasn't planning on sharing this with you, but I, I have seriously discerned uh, becoming a deacon in the Catholic Church. So if that's in the cards, if, if that happens, I'd love to be a deacon. Um, deacon Tim Britt is a great uh, role model that way, as well as Denny Lemkel, who has since passed away but was a deacon at St. Mary's for a long time. And I looked up to both of them, still do, and I think that uh, I have something to offer to the St. Mary's community, and I don't want to sit down and, and stop what I'm doing. And so I think that that, that would be a way to grow. Um, so my grandma, I know is praying for it. She's 87 and hopes to see it before she passes. Oh, on, so. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, man. It, it, that's another sacrifice in and of itself is going through that process and, and being able to, to do that. I mean, I see how involved Deacon Tim is. I, and, and that's outside of what he does for a living, correct? Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he works at St. E's, I know. Right. Full time job. So yeah. Absolutely. Correct. So, I mean, you're talking about a lot of volunteer work as well and, but like you said, you, you feel called to it. You've discerned it, and that's what's important. And I think you'd be awesome, by well, the thanks, way. Thanks, man. Thanks. So that would be fantastic. Um, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, no. Thanks for having awesome. me on here. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Cool. Well, we appreciate you coming on here. Um, I look forward to having more people on. If any of you out there listening enjoyed what you were listening to, and maybe you're thinking, I have a – story I could tell, or maybe you just want to come on and have a conversation with me. I'd love to have a conversation with more people. We've got some awesome guests coming up, and I'm looking forward to doing this more and more each week. So reach out to me. You can email me um, at adam.franzen13 at gmail.com, or you can find me on Facebook if you're friends with me on Facebook and and reach out to me there. And uh, I look forward to hearing from all you. Thanks, Brett, for coming on. Thank you, Adam. Awesome. Well, thanks, Brett, to come to the table, and I hope you all continue to come to the table and learn a little bit more about your faith. God bless y'all.